Good morning, everybody. My name is Tracy Michelson, and I am the Director of Children's Ministry here at Fishing Creek Salem. I'd like to welcome you to our worship service this week. Kind of a little different than normal, but that's okay. Um, we're just glad that you're here with us. And I also wanted to let you know that I'm going to actually do a brief children's message first. And um, then we are going to go into our regular part of the worship service with the adults and the music. So I'm going to give you a second to go grab your kids and have them cuddle around on the screen or your phone, however you're going to do this. And uh, we will get started. Okay, now that you guys are all here, we can get started. I want to talk today about prediction. Who can tell me what prediction means? Do you guys know? Let's think about it. Prediction is any of us just trying to take a guess as of what's coming next, okay? So let's try this. How about if I were to put some blocks up and I were to start building and I was building something pretty tall. Okay, I'm building it tall. Let me put some more on here. Let's keep going. I'm feeling brave. Are you guys feeling brave? Whoa, one more. Okay. If I were to knock it down, or if I were to push on this, I predict it's going to fall. All right, what about you? Do you predict that will fall all over the place if I knock into it? Let's see. Yep, it's all over the place. How about this? How about I have a deck of cards? And how about I ask you, my little friends, anybody, my adult friends, I need you to pick one, okay? What are the chances that I'm gonna guess what cards you have? Well, there's 52 cards in the deck, so I've got 52 chances to get the right answer. That's the only way I can make a prediction, right? I can't really just see through the card. Nobody can see through the card. So that's another prediction. So what about what's in this bag? It's a big bag. I wonder what's in it. What do you think? I don't know. Under these crazy times, it might even be toilet paper. Who knows? But let's see. What is it? Can you predict what it's going to be? Can you? It's a book. It's a devotional book, one that I'm going to be using with you guys on Facebook over the next couple of weeks. Could you predict what page I'm going to open this book to right now? What do you think? Let's see how many, what, how many choices you have. This book is 224 pages long. Can you guess what page I'm gonna open it to? Let's see. Oh, page 106. If you guessed 106, you guessed right. So why am I talking about predictions right now anyway? A lot of us are at home right now with our families, our parents and our siblings, our children, and we are wondering when this quarantine's gonna be over. Like, when are we gonna finally get to be able to go back to the playgrounds or go back to school or go back to work? Some of the parents, they wanna go back to work, I promise, kids. Um, but there are things that we wanna do and we don't even know when it's gonna happen. And we all keep trying to predict when that's gonna happen. And the idea of predicting isn't new. Um, what's really kind of cool is we've all read in the Bible. And if you were at VBS last year, you definitely know about this kind of stuff. Um, back in our biblical times, we remember when Noah was called to build an ark and he was called to build this huge ship and fill it with animals and put all his family on that boat and wait and wait and wait. And then the rains came. And then the floods came and he's like, when am I going to get out of this boat? He didn't know. He was trying to predict, but he didn't know. What about when they were in Egypt and they got plagued with gnats or the locusts or the blood in the river? All those things happened. They were wondering when this stuff was going to be over. They were trying to predict 
when all of these plagues would end. Then the thunderstorms came and then the hail came. And again, they were per trying to predict when all of that crazy stuff would stop. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? It's kind of familiar of right now, we're trying to predict when this stay at home stuff is gonna be over. When are we gonna get back to the soccer fields or the baseball fields or to school or to work? When is all that gonna happen? We all keep trying to predict. But just like in all those Bible times, somebody showed up. Every one of those instances, those people weren't in it alone when they were in Egypt, when the boils came and the blood in the river, they weren't alone. Jesus was there. He showed up. They didn't have to wonder anymore when it was going to be over because they knew that Jesus was with them. They didn't have to be scared and they didn't have to worry. So just like he promised in those times to be around, he's with us right now too. He's around your dinner table when you say your prayers in the evening. He's there at bedtime when you're saying your prayers. He's even with you when you might get in trouble by your parents because you and your brother and sisters are fighting. He's with us every step of the way. How cool is that to know that we all know that Jesus is in with each one of us. He loves us. He's with us. And if you remember... God didn't promise us that this crazy bad stuff or challenging stuff wouldn't happen during our lives, but he did promise that he would always be with us. And I guarantee you, he is with us. So I want you to take a moment and pray with me. And I want you to stop trying to predict what's going to happen next. And I want you to just rest on the promise that God is with us. Okay, so let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all of those that have gathered today in your name with their families around our neighborhoods and in our communities. Lord, it is just so important that we continue to focus on you. Lord, be with each and every one of us as we have concerns and worries. That's normal, Lord. That is all normal stuff. But help us remember that you are with us. You have already been here. You know exactly how this is going to end. You know exactly how it's going to go. Lord, we just want to know that you are with us and that each and every one of my friends stays healthy and safe, whether they're a big kid or a little kid or a mom or a dad or a grandma, anybody, everybody that this message reaches to. I just want you to know that Jesus loves you he is with you through all of this craziness. And I am just a text or a Facebook message away from any of my little friends. So feel free to reach out. Lord, we're all in this together. Please keep us safe and until we meet again. And all the cool kids said, amen. Yeah. All right. So make sure you're checking on Facebook on the Fishing Creek Children's Ministry page because I am going to have a spirit week this week. And then I want pictures shared. I cannot wait to see all of my friends' faces with our spirit week. And along with spirit week, I also am starting a Lego challenge. So every day, you're going to dress up in your spirit and you are also whatever is called for that day. And then you're also going to be called to build something with Legos. So pull them out of the box. I don't care how old you are. You can be an adult or a kiddo. I'm really excited to see what this week is going to bring with our Legos. So stay safe, everyone, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Thanks, Tracy, for your great children's message. Good morning and welcome to Salem. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're here for the first time, hi. We're so happy that you could be here. I'm Susan Ryder, Director of Communications, and I have a few announcements for you this morning. This week we're doing things a little bit differently so that we all uh, didn't have to be together to meet. We thought it would be better to do it this way, so we took video from various locations and then put it all together. So we hope that works out really well this morning. Uh, ministry continues here at Salem. Uh, Jess Hussman, Director of Youth and Children's Ministry, has been posting daily challenges on Instagram to remind the students to take time out of their day to grow spiritually. Um, they have a little extra time on their hands to, you know, to take that time and be with God. 
Tracy Michelson, the director of children's ministry, has created an online church scavenger hunt for the kids, and they, they really seem to be enjoying it. Uh, it's on the children's ministry Facebook page. And Salem families uh, with children are encouraged to join the group. So you can contact Tracy Michelson. Uh, you can get her contact information from our staff page on the website, or you can call the church. Gina Curtis, uh, director of Salem Community Nursery School, is providing lessons through Seesaw to the children and also creating a circle time in Zoom. Everybody knows what Zoom is now. We've been using it a lot, so it's pretty cool that she's going to use that so she can have like a, a story time with the kids in the nursery school. The hospitality ministry has created a group to contact folks in Salem to just check in. So if you would like to be a part of that calling group, you can call the church office at 717-938-1928. Our phone hours have been tweaked a little bit due to staff circumstances. So our, our phone hours are Monday through Wednesday, 8 a.m. to noon. If you don't receive a pickup, don't worry. Leave a message and somebody will definitely get back to you. Please consider prayerfully your financial commitments to Salem. Uh, even as we aren't in the building, we still have electric and internet and all the things that, that keep a church up and running. And our staff continues their work in worship, communication, and outreach. You can mail your gifts, you can drop them in the drop box at the south entrance, or consider online giving. And you can find information about online giving on our church uh, website, which you're on right now, on the home page on the resources tab. So if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll see the church resources tab, click it, and you can find online giving information there. And if you have any issues, you can give the church office a call and they can help you with that. Thanks, blessings. Thank you so much, Susan. Uh, appreciate that update on our communication side. I'm Pastor Debbie Heisley Cato. I'm one of the pastors here. And I want to remind you, as we are together in worship, that we are more than what we can see and smell and touch and hear. We are physical creatures, and thank God for that, but we're also spiritual creatures. Jesus said, um, as recorded in the book of John, chapter 4, verse 24, God is spirit, and those who worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. At the depth of our beings, we are spiritually connected to God. And because we are all connected to God, we are also connected to one another. And so I invite you, during this time of worship, to open your heart to God's presence, both within and around you. And open your spirit to others who worship with you now. Let us be together in spirit as we worship. How beautiful on the mountains 
are the feet of those who bring good news. Friends, you have some beautiful feet and beautiful hands lately as you are bringing good news and help to others, even if it is just one person at a time. This is our moment to love and serve. You know, I think Jesus had uh, a good model for us in doing ministry uh, in whatever context we may find ourselves. I'm reminded uh, in Luke chapter 10 that Jesus calls together about 70 followers and he says, buddy up, uh, and is ready to send them out two by two. Uh, talk about a minimized workforce. And then Jesus gives them specific instructions uh, don't take this, only do that, do this, move on from that. And I think we can relate also to that kind of ministry because we too are being told to move on from that or don't do this or only do this. The method of ministry and serving others is not with broad brushstrokes, but with a much finer point. Our context in serving others is so limited right now and it is not equal to the crisis that is upon us being so broad. To love and serve with a broad brush at, in these moments, in these days, is not wise. But Jesus gives us a model for ministry no matter what is happening in our world. Let us move forward on our mission to love and serve with a finer point. Let us start with those closest to us. Let us serve our families. And I don't mean this in a, a self-focused or self-centered way, but in a very spiritual and loving way. Mother Teresa is quoted in saying, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. What do our loved ones need the most right now from us? Let us also serve the isolated who might be missing from our view right now. I find the recent Chuck Knows Church videos, YouTube videos to be very helpful as he has a series now called Things You Can Do COVID-19. Uh, we can make a call, uh, possibly do an old-fashioned phone tree where four or five people call each other and then the last person will call the first person. Uh, we can uh, offer to run an errand if, if we are going out for essentials to let someone else know. Oh, here's one. Write a note. That's right, an actual note on a clean surface with clean hands and a clean pen. Uh, don't lick the stamp. <laughs> or we can make an effort to greet others nearby, to be watchful of our neighbors that when they come out to get their mail, we can uh, meet them across the street and say hello to them. If you're not sure what to do, Wait, pray, trust God to show you, to bring it to you. When I found myself in places of serving, when I've jumped in to help, uh, the task of helping people always seems to rise above anything else that I would uh, hold as an opinion or some kind of separate belief from others that I'm working with. Uh, helping others is a unified force. To serve is to bring us together. So when we're feeding people at shared table down at Goldsboro, or we are providing food or delivering food uh, to our neighbors through Soul Food Ministry, or handing out West Shore School District grab-and-go meals at the Budget Inn with clean hands and plastic gloves on. When we serve, 
We no longer seem to care uh, who is conservative and who is progressive, who has degrees and who has a GED, who only comes to church on Easter Sunday or who comes every Sunday to serve is the great equalizer. The message to love and serve is being sent out like a beacon across our world. In Europe, there are people singing to one another. They are standing in doorways and sitting in windows saying good night to one another. Some start cheering at a designated hour in the evening for the helpers of their community, doctors and nurses, and countless others serving them behind the scenes. The world is sending us a clear picture of the mission to love and serve. I am called in this moment to invite two different kinds of people. In this moment, someone is alone, praying for someone to care. And to these very ones, my prayer is your prayer. So let our church try to connect you to someone who cares. I also invite in this moment someone who's looking to love and serve. To these very ones, my heart is your heart. So let us, Salem, try to connect you to people you can serve. There is a battle, a broad crisis, and it calls for foot soldiers to love and serve with a finer point. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet and hands of those who bring good news. Stay beautiful, friends. Stay beautiful. Thank you, Pastor Jimmy, for reminding us that we are called to serve, and indeed our life is richer and fuller as we serve. So now let us join together in prayer. Jesus, our friend, our Savior, you could have displayed your mighty power. You could have made us bow down and worship you. And yet when you walked this earth, you said, I am among you as one who serves. You have shown us that greatness lies in sharing ourselves with others and working for the good of all people. And when we follow you in loving and serving, we discover purpose and meaning for our lives and we experience a deep down joy. Thank you for inviting us onto your path of service. God, it is difficult in these days of uncertainty to remain calm. Worries creep into my thoughts and our thoughts. Worries disturb our sleep. We are bombarded with a constant stream of news and information about the COVID-19 virus until we can think of nothing else. First, God, help us to take the good advice that is being offered to us Help us to be careful and wise so that our behavior does not put us, our families, or others in danger. And then when we have done all that we can do, give us the calm assurance that you are with us and you are working among us for the good. Give us the faith and trust to put our lives and the lives of our loved ones in your hands. And then open our eyes to all the good that is still around us and to the good that may indeed come out of this time. Give wisdom, O oh God, to those who lead us, that they may make the best decisions possible. Bring hope and healing to any who are suffering this day. May your peace surround any who are living in fear. Bring calm to troubled minds and hearts. Be friend and companion to those who are lonely. And even though we cannot be together physically, help us to connect with each other, to serve one another, and to be your voice, your hands, your feet for those who are in need. All this, O oh God, we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. have found yourself in the presence of God this morning. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Oh, I think, I think my neighbor is out back. I think I need to go find her. <laughs>